And this video, we're going to um, develop the most general formula of the Lebon's rule for differentiating integrals. Uh, you can find the videos at the playlist for the videos at digital-university.org. If you click on free calculus videos and then scroll down to where it says differentiation of integrals. Now, we're going to consider the most general type of case where we have an integral of a function of more than one variable and the limits on the integral, they're not constants, rather they're some function, in this case a function of x. So we can consider, for example, this kind of integral with the cosine of xt integrating with respect to t. So we treat the x as a constant when we integrate. So this gives us 1 over x times the sine of xt. Now the limits of t, as you can see, are not constants, but there's some function of x. So here, t equals 5x. Put 5x in, and we have 5x squared then minus 1 over x times the sine of x. t is now x squared, so this will be x cubed. So it's a more complicated type of integral situation. And we're saying here, this gives us some function fx of t, just like here. That's this. This would be the capital f of x t. This is small f of x t. Then we put in the values for t. t is v of x. t is u of x. In this example, v of x is 5x. u of x is x squared. So here is writing this out in more general form. And derivatives are anti or integrals are antiderivatives. So if we take the partial derivative of this with respect to t, it gives us this. Just like here, if we take the partial of this with respect to t, it gives us the cosine of xt. And notice again that when we have this type of integral, it does eventually give us some function of x, just as we saw right here. So integrals of this form, they're written more generally as just i of x, as we have here. Now, let's consider then i of x equals this, f of xv minus xu. What happens if we take, then, the partial of ix with respect, say, to v? So the partial i of x with respect to v, that will equal the partial of this with respect to v. Of course, that's 0. This has no v function in it. So that equals the partial of f of x v with respect to v. Now, notice here the partial of x of x t with respect to t is this. Well, here we have just replaced then t with v. So this will equal f of x v. Now, if we take the partial of i of x with 
with respect to u, that will equal the partial of this with respect to u. That's 0, so we have minus the partial of f of x u. with respect to u. And again, we have this equation. Now we have t replaced with u. f of x u with respect to u will equal f of x u with a minus sign before. Okay, so we want to remember then that this is this. We're going to use this, and we're going to use this. So remember these two equations. The partial of our integral with respect to v is small f of x v the partial of our integral with respect to u is minus small f of x u. Now what we're going to do is erase this and make some room. Here is our integral and we had that the partial of i of x with respect to v, that was f of x v, and the partial of i with respect to u, that was minus small f of x u. Now, let's go back to our integral here. di dx taking the derivative of our integral now, that equals the partial of i of x with respect to x plus we have the partial of i of x with respect to v and the partial of v with respect to x plus the partial of i of x with respect to u partial of u with respect to x. This now is the total differential. Of course, here we're just using the chain rule. Now, the partial of ix with respect to x, that's the partial of this with respect to x. Of course, we can obtain that just by taking the partial inside of the integral. So, we have then that this equals the partial with respect to x of f of x t dt. This expression is the partial of this with respect to x, as you saw in the previous videos, you can do that by taking it inside of the integral. And that's what we have right here, and then the limits are ux bx. Then we have these terms to consider. The partial of ix with respect to v, that's this. So we have plus This is f of x v partial of v 
with respect to x, this is this, and the partial of x with respect to u, that's this. So now we have minus f of x u, the partial of u with respect to x. So finally we have that the derivative d dx and remember we can write this as d dx because as we shown is that this right here does give a function of x once you go through the whole integration process just as we saw with this specific example we do get a function of x so we can say we can consider what is di dx but with these limits being functions then we have to consider the partial of ix with respect to v dv dx plus the partial ix with respect to u du dx so that we get the total derivative. Now in the previous examples that you saw us work with the limits were just constants so these terms here would just be zero and then the derivative of our integral was just taking was just this just by moving the differentiation process inside of the integral we had it here we have constants and then d dx of f of x t dt we just move this inside write it as a partial with respect to x because this is a function of two variables And that's all there was to it. But here, when the limits themselves are functions, then we have this more complicated equation. We have this term, but then we also have these terms we have to consider. In this case, the limits were constants, so these derivatives here would just be zero, so we just have this simpler expression. Now, we have a more general complicated expression or more general expression say for the more complicated case when the limits on the integral are functions instead of constants then our the differential of that integral is this more complicated expression and to see how this works the best way to approach that is just work several examples but here will be our formula and then we'll have several examples where we apply our formula and then the purpose of this is not only to be able to differentiate integrals but you see in other examples where the original integral is so complicated that there's no way to integrate it but we can differentiate it and once we have it differentiated we can work backwards and find a way to evaluate our original integral and that how we do that we'll take that up in future videos